Hello and welcome back to another video of EJCP Beer Reviews with Leo. Today I'm going to be taking a look at EJCP Category 8B Schwartz Beer, and I'm going to be taking a look at Monschoff Schwartz Beer from Kolmbacher Brewery. Uh, this is what it looks like, and uh, I'm going to be using a Pilsner Pokal glass. Uh, should be appropriate. And I'm greatly looking forward to this, so let's give this a pour. Now in studying the styles, I've decided that it would be immensely useful to have uh, a one sentence summary uh, to summarize this style of beer. And so for Schwartz beer, uh, my summary sentence is a drinkable, light-bodied, dark-colored German lager that balances smooth roast with moderate hop bitterness. So I'm um, looking forward to this. I don't believe I've ever... Eh, I may have tried this style once before, but it's been quite a while. Uh, so here it is. Um, and as usual, I'm going to be going through the style guidelines uh, as, as a, a beer judge going through appearance, then aroma, mouthfeel, flavor, and then overall impression. So uh, right away in terms of appearance, it's um, pretty dark. Um, I wanna say it it's definitely not like opaque by any means. Um, I would guess this is in the 20s on the SRM scale. Um, and actually, as an AHA member, I recently got this pretty nifty uh, SRM grades coloring. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say that that's right around uh, 20 SRM. Um, it is not really holding ahead very well. Um, that's okay, could have been partially due to the glass. I tried to clean the glass before I started this, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, appearance, I think, um, I mean, not, not a whole lot to speak of. It's, it's not the most exciting thing to look at just because it's a, a dark beer, not really clear or anything, but um, I'll give it a two out of three. Um, the head, I would say, is uh, definitely on the, the lighter side. I wouldn't say it's like beige or tan or anything, maybe, um, yeah. Okay, aroma then. Wow, um, pretty amazing uh, malt aroma. Ooh, yeah. Um, pulled up some malt descriptors. I'm gonna try and take a look at that and see what uh, what jumps out at me as obvious. Um, definitely sweet in the nose. Uh, probably some caramel. Um, Maybe maybe some licorice and chocolate. Yeah, um, I definitely have smelled some of this, these smells when I've used honey malt in brewing. Um, and yeah, probably some like some dark fruits, maybe like a raisin or a prune. Um, yeah, pretty happy with uh, with the aroma. I'm going to give this actually a 12 out of 12 on aroma. There's very little I've smelled that has made me this excited to try a beer. Yeah, although it has been a little while since I've had a beer. All right, so now I'm going to give it a taste. Okay, mouthfeel. Um, pretty light in body. Um, surprisingly, perhaps so for the, the color. Um, yeah, definitely drinkable. Um, it makes you want to just go back in for another sip right away. Um, slightly carbonated, but not like, uh, doesn't have that carbonic bite that some, some of the higher, like, um, higher carbonation, like Belgian beers might have. Um, I can see bubbles rapidly forming and disappearing at the surface, so, um, Yeah, um, very smooth, um, definitely not like astringent 
or anything. Um, I'm going to give the mouthfeel uh, 5 out of 5. I'm pretty sure for the style, it's supposed to be very drinkable despite the color. That's uh, It's a Schwartz beer, but... Um, and I know like uh, dark beers kind of intimidate a lot of people, but I think the Germans kind of got it right with this style uh, in terms of making something really drinkable, uh, but really malty and uh, definitely full of the dark malt flavors. Uh, and that's actually what I want to get into next is the flavor profile. Um, I'm actually going to pull up that malt descriptor list again and see uh, which of the uh, flavors come through that I found in the aromas. So. Hmm. Um, yeah, let's see what jumps out the most. I think definitely some of that, um, that like dark fruit, um, reminds me if you've ever, if you're a home brewer and you've ever tried the green, uh, special B, it's got that really kind of like raisiny prune kind of flavor. Uh, that's like the first thing that I noticed just because of, uh, how distinct of a flavor it is. Um, definitely get some, some caramel and, and uh, sweetness. Um, I wouldn't say it's like grainy or, um, any of the, the lighter, lighter, like bready, bris biscuit, those kind of malts, definitely not anything like that. Um, yeah, I, I think the color does a good job of indicating the kind of, uh, flavors you would expect from the malt. Um. Definitely, maybe uh, some of the chocolate type flavors. Um, maybe some brown sugar or honey. Um, kind of reminds me of like a brown ale, to be honest. Um, and it's been a long time since I had like a Newcastle brown ale, but um, I guess if I were. If you, if you handed this to me blind and I, I were to try it, I would think maybe this is like a brown ale, like a, like a, a really well done version of like a Newcastle brown ale. Um, and yeah, uh, pretty big fan of the flavor, I think. Um, you definitely get some of the dark chocolate flavors. Don't, not like an overly sweet, like Hershey kind of flavor, but uh, if you've ever had like a like a sixty or seventy percent cacao dark chocolate, uh, it's that kind of like slightly bitter, a little bit sour. Um, you get the same thing in some of the dark roast coffees. And you maybe get some earthy hops uh, also in the aroma. And I think that that also, some of that bitterness in the hops comes through, uh, kind of balances the malt. Um, maybe maybe a little bit deceptive, but I, I do think that the beer comes across as, um, I mean, it's definitely malty and sweet, but um, certainly balanced by a certain bitterness uh, imparted, if I had to guess, from the hops. Um, so then in, term, in terms of overall impression, uh, let's go back to the, the one sentence summary and see how it compares. Drinkable, definitely. Uh, light bodied, again, definitely. Um, dark colored, pretty, I mean, I guess it's dark colored, but um, for something called Schwartz beer, where Schwartz is the German word for black, I would expect this to actually be a bit darker. Um, and then in terms of the yeast, yeah, I mean, nothing jumps out at me in terms of a yeast flavor, but for a German lager where malt is playing such a prominent role, I really wouldn't expect to get a whole lot in the yeast. Um, so if I had to rank the uh, the flavor contributions, first and foremost would be the malt. Um, definitely secondarily to that would be the hops. And then 
I, I don't really pick up on any yeast at all, and I think that's pretty classic for a uh, German lager. <clears throat> Yeah, so definitely drinkable. Um, the the beer is starting to warm up a bit now, and actually, I think uh, you get a, a little bit more of some of those um, those like tart and bitter kind of chocolate flavors, uh, chocolate and coffee flavors. I, I honestly, I like the I liked it when it was really cold. Um, it's super drinkable. Pretty hot day right now. Um, so I think I'd want to drink this as cold as possible and just kind of finish it pretty quickly. Um, but, th you know, then you don't really appreciate the beer as much. All right, so appearance, I'm going to say 2 out of 3. Aroma, I said 12 out of 12. Mouthfeel, I think um, 4 out of 5. The flavor... I think it, it, it reaches what it's trying to be. Um, I'm going to give it a 17 out of 20 on flavor. And then in terms of the overall impression, I think it's a spot on the money for the style. Again, I don't have as many references as I'd like to compare it to, but I'm very happy with uh, what this product is in comparison to what the style guidelines say it should be. Just because it's a little bit hard to come by, it's probably not a style I'm going to be seeking out a whole lot more, but um, definitely worth a try if you've never had it. Um, I think stateside, you could probably get away with uh, brown ales um, if you're, if you're kind of looking for something like this. That's definitely how it jumps out to me as uh, most similar, but I think... I think with a brown ale, you'll you'll probably get more of that like English yeast, maybe some fruity ester character going on, um, as well as maybe some some more of the English hop varieties. Uh, this is definitely a more malt forward style, and I appreciate appreciate that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm definitely gonna take some inspiration from this going forward with some of my brews. Um, hope you appreciated uh, this video and maybe learned something. Again, um, this has been Monschoff Schwartz beer from Kolmbacher Brewery. It's category 8B Schwartz beer, which falls under category 8 dark European lager. So I just wanted to come back for another minute and do a little bit of another style comparison. Um, I was looking at the style guidelines and I think I overlooked a few styles that this might be closer to. Uh, in my studies, I haven't studied extensively the European lagers, so it makes sense maybe that uh, these didn't come immediately to mind. I stand by my analysis that the beer reminded me of a brown ale, um, but I thought it was worth pointing out uh, the style comparison and also pointing out um, some of the maybe flaws that I missed in not knowing the style as well as I should have. But that's why I'm here, that's why I'm learning, and I'm hopefully relaying some of this information to you. So in the, the style guidelines, they give a comparison uh, and they say that it's much like a Munich Dunkel. And once I read that, I was like, oh yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, usually it's darker in color than a Munich Dunkel. I think if you hold this up to the light, well, it doesn't really come through on the camera, but I think this is a quite a light brown. Uh, I gave you the SRM. It's, I said 20, it could be even as light as like 15 SRM. It should be drier on the palette than a Munich Dunkel as well, and I haven't had a whole lot of Munich Dunkel, but uh, I do think it's it's pretty dry on the palate and quite light in body. Um, there is a, a probably a bit of a roasted malt edge that balances out the malt base. That's uh, also in the style comparison. 
but they specifically point out that it should not taste like an American porter made with lager yeast. I would not describe it that way. Um, I think porter would have a more noticeable roast note and probably be a bit more astringent and harsh, uh, even with a lager yeast. Um, but they say that it's drier and less malty and with less hop character than a Czech dark lager. Um, I may come back to this video um, in the future when I try and do my Czech dark lager review because I'd be interested to compare the two styles and maybe I'll pick up another bottle of this to, to do that comparison. Um, cheers, prost, and keep up the studies. Uh, enjoy your beer. Look forward to seeing you in the next one.